Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. You know, we've been going through the book of Exodus and the story of Moses, and we'll soon be looking at the story of Israel fleeing from Egypt. But at this point in the story, it's a bit hard to imagine that Moses would be the hero of the story. It was set up well for that. There's this terrible decree for the Israelite babies to be killed, and there's this small act of defiance from Moses' mother to make a basket for the baby Moses in hopes that he would somehow be saved. And God shows up, and he was. Moses is saved. He's raised by Pharaoh's daughter as Egyptian royalty, and while also keeping his Hebrew heritage. It seems like the stage is perfectly set for him to find a way to get into Egyptian leadership and to start enacting and influencing change and make a difference and save his people. But then sin kicks in, his flesh kicks in, and he acts in defense of a Hebrew worker, as we saw yesterday, and Moses kills an Egyptian boss. And he thinks he gets away with it, but he finds out the next day that everyone knows, and it's not good for him. So he, he does what anyone rational would do, and he runs, I guess. Um, but he runs and flees to the desert and appears that the chance that Moses had to make a difference was gone. But today, we won't fully see how God will turn that around. That'll be coming in the coming days and weeks. But we will see something really interesting here in chapter 2. Now, let's take a look at this starting in verse 16 of chapter 2. It says, Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs of the water in their father's flock. The shepherds came, though, and drove them away. But Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. And when they came home to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Then where is he? That Why have you left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah. She gave birth to his son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. Now, this may seem like a small event that maybe we could skip over, but it's actually a major turning point in the story of Moses. His interaction here connects him with this family and, and connects him to a network, and things start to turn around pretty drastically here. But what is it that did this? If we look at it, it was Moses' desire to stand up for those in need and serve them. Now, this is interesting because this is the desire that was done in a different way of the same desire that got him in trouble in the first place in Egypt. But Moses again takes action, again stands up for people in need, but this time seemingly in a much better way with a much better result. And, and there's a couple of lessons that I think we can learn from this here today. And the first is that it's sometimes easy for us to never try anything again when we failed at it once. Moses tried standing up for someone who's defenseless. He made mistakes. Maybe he let his, his anger get the best of him. And he was now dealing with the consequences. It would have been easy for him to say, well, been there, done that, never doing that again, but he didn't. He appears to have learned from this and again made the choice to take action and got a different and this time favorable result. See, we need to remember that failure often isn't the worst thing that could happen to us. Because as many people throughout history have said, failure is just teaching us another way that didn't work so we can adjust and try again. And some of you have experienced some failures in 2021. Some of you experienced some failures in 2020. Some of you experienced some failures in 1996 that are still crippling you from moving forward. But we need to remember that we need to try again with some things this year. We need to let our failures be in the past, teaching us lessons and trying again in the present. But the second thing I can't help but notice here is that even in Moses' time of running, of fleeing, of probably even some moping and some pouting there in the wilderness, he still chose to serve others. It would have been easy for him to be cynical and say, well, the last time I tried to help someone, it cost me everything and I'm never doing that again. Some of you are maybe in that place. You tried to help someone and maybe you did something wrong or maybe they did something wrong or just in general blew up in your face. But don't take the approach of, well, I'm never putting myself out there for someone again because God has called us to serve and to love people. Sometimes that goes well, sometimes for many reasons it doesn't, but let me challenge you this year to try again. Whether that's with serving someone and being a person who, who, who puts themselves out to serve, to help, to stand up for, to defend people, or maybe it's just trying again after some form of personal failure, because the end result is worth it if we don't give up. So let me encourage you today, try again.
because the end is worth it. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.